developments and uh, 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 in some cases hopeful developments. Um, if we speak of Europe, I would say uh, we are not in the situation of uh, uh, immediate uh, preparation of a revolution. Uh, we know that. Uh, what we can do as communists in Europe uh, and in the European area uh, is uh, to uh, form uh, a nucleus uh, of correct theoretical ideas about our time, of uh, emotional uh, resistance of uh, the uh, exploitation and uh, the war driving um, uh, imperialism uh, of the capitalist system. Uh, and uh, to uh, form a, a small cadre for the time when the masses will be uh, seized by these ideas. Uh, I think the um, uh, contradictions of um, uh, capitalism, contradictions of this imperious phase, period of uh, capitalism, uh, sharpen each day all over Europe, in the European Union, but also in the United Kingdom or in Switzerland, where my wife and I live, uh, and which doesn't belong to the European Union. In big imperialist countries, as Germany or uh, as France, uh, the contradictions sharpen as much that the uh, ruling classes are uh, find it necessary uh, to destruct the formal bourgeois democracy more and more. Uh, that means they, uh, they, they get into contradiction with their own ideology, with their own ideology of democracy, of human rights, and so on. I don't speak of the United States. You, he doesn't need uh, to analyze uh, the, all the uh, violations of human rights in the United States. I only remind of uh, uh, Guantanamo or, or the Cuban Fives or so, uh, which uh, are examples uh, for, uh, for, for a system uh, which doesn't respect its own, its own values. Uh, but I think, for example, that a rather bourgeois democratic country as Germany, more and more um, uh, uh, is transformed into a, a state uh, with an authoritarian and more and more with fascist methods uh, rule authoritarian uh, country. Uh, I think um, uh, people in, in Europe are not in the same sense aware of that than those who live in that country, but the, not only the destruction of the social system, um, but also the destruction of uh, the legal system of democracy in Germany is uh, progressing more and more. Um, these contradictions, uh, uh, of which these are the symptoms, are, uh, I think, uh, definitive uh, for the present state of late capitalism, of imperialist capitalism. And these um, uh, developments uh, tend uh, for uh, further uh, tensions within uh, the capitalist societies uh, in Europe. So we are, um, uh, it is demanded of us, I would say, of us as communists, as Marxists, 
uh, to analyze these developments and uh, to uh, give, especially the young generation, answers on the questions they have for the future of our society. Uh, all the other uh, political movements and parties in uh, the uh, 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 capitalist world have only answers which are pragmatic solutions of uh, special, special problems. Uh, and those are not solutions, but those are remedies. Uh, but uh, we have a theory, the Marxist theory, the Marxist-Leninist theory, uh, which enables us to, um, to describe the present state of imperialism correctly and to uh, show what must be done to overcome it. I always say um, uh, socialism is not a utopian idea of a better, better society, but it is a logical and a historical alternative which is logically and historically necessary. Uh, you can um, show that uh, with the configurations of dialectical log logics. The uh, system in which, capitalist system in which we live is characterized definitively uh, by uh, the private property in production means, by the surplus, the profits of uh, those who, <coughs> are, uh, who own uh, the means of production, and by the law of accumulation of capital. Always uh, these profits have to be reinvested in new production means uh, to uh, uh, produce new profits and so on, a, a permanent continuous process. This permanent continuous process leads uh, to an always increasing lag between the rich and the poor. And that is a, a situation uh, which cannot be altered by any reforms within um, the capitalist system. It can be only uh, changed uh, if we uh, replace this system by another system. And what can be these other systems? This other system can only a system which uh, is, as Hegel said, the determined negation, the bestimmte negation, the determined negation of the present system. If the present system is characterized by the uh, uh, private property in production means, the determined negation of the system uh, is, uh, the, uh, is the social property uh, of production means. That means a socialist system. So uh, I say socialism is not uh, the idea of, uh, of a paradise, uh, but it is the idea of the necessary um, uh, alternative to the, pre to the present system with all its, its uh, critical uh, self-destroying um, uh, uh, features. Uh, Depositations uh, of the private owners of production means cannot be a process of reforms in the legal systems. They will defend their rights, and that's natural. Uh, <laughs> and uh, therefore, uh, the change of the systems, the alternation, uh, the, the alternation from one formation of society to the uh, following formation of society, can only be done by a revolutionary process. And a revolutionary process always includes the employment of force and includes even uh, um, acts which, which we would not morally um, uh, support, but which are necessary moments of this, uh, or I would say inevitable moments uh, of this uh, revolutionary process. Ideological um, uh, topics of uh, the anti-communist uh, uh, propaganda of the uh, ruling classes uh, of the capitalist system, uh, always try to uh, argue from those moral 
um, arguments, moral uh, reasons, um, and say, well, what was done after the October Revolution in the uh, process of building up uh, a socialist system in the Soviet Union? There were so many illegal acts, there were uh, violations of human rights, and so on. And uh, all that which is uh, subsumized under the um, uh, slogan of Stalinism, um, uh, which is a silly slogan because uh, the historical movements uh, does, don't depend uh, on individual persons, uh, 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 they are structured. Uh, and they use that because we all agree that they were done things which are morally not to support, not to justify. But on the other hand, we must see that the immense uh, straining of the idea when there was an attempt to build up a socialist society uh, included a lot of internal contradictions. Internal contradictions, for example, uh, between those uh, two wings within the, the Communist Party of the Young Soviet Union and uh, whether to go um, with intense um, uh, industrial um, uh, building and, and uh, collectivation of the, of the agricultural sector or do that more and more uh, slowly and, and um, yeah, all these things were necessary, I would say, contradictions within the process of uh, uh, building up a socialist system and within these uh, um, uh, contradictions uh, there uh, rose, uh, rose uh, uh, serious, uh, serious struggles between wings of the party. Uh, on the other hand, your uh, building up of uh, socialism in the Soviet Union had to start with a working class of two million work, uh, industrial workers uh, compared with 150 million peasants. Uh, that was not a classical revolution as Marx had in, in his mind when he uh, expected that in the most developed capitalist countries there will be uh, uh, the first step for revolution by a strong working class. It was just another situation. And that meant that uh, the revolutionary uh, event of the October Revolution in uh, 1917 uh, uh, could not be uh, finished in a short time, that the revolution had to be a prolonged process, a prolonged revolution, uh, other than in uh, the bourgeois revolution, who could um, uh, base on uh, a two century uh, lasting uh, building up of, a, of an early capitalist society uh, between uh, 1700 or 1650 and 1780, and then only changed the political power when the feudalists were, were uh, replaced uh, by a by bourgeois uh, government. Uh, that was the French Revolution, but the, uh, there was a strong bourgeois class which were already, uh, already uh, developed and was ready to overtake the power. That was quite another thing in the Soviet Revolution, quite another thing in the Chinese or in the Cuban Revolution, where this uh, preparation of a new uh, formation of society uh, had not been done before, but had to be done during the revolutionary process. That's quite another um, uh, historical situation. And uh, uh, a historical situation in which uh, a small part of the population in this uh, uh, case of the Cuban Revolution, uh, uh, the Communist Party, the Bolsheviks, had to overtake the, uh, uh, the task and the responsibility for this development. Uh, and they had not a, a, a big background of people uh, to whom uh, they could apply uh, to take part in this process. They had to, to, to overtake it uh, as a minority. And that naturally meant that this minority had to uh, develop administrative uh, structures uh, from which uh, a certain party bureaucracy uh, arised. That was a structural contradiction in, uh, in the development. That was not because one or the other of the, the leaders uh, were bad men, but uh, uh, it was a structural necessity uh, to um, 
uh, transformed the dictatorship of the working class into the dictatorship of the avant-garde of the working class. And the avant-garde, that was a party. Uh, that this uh, situation lasted on even after this time of transition uh, has, again, abnormal causes, abnormal reasons. There was the Second World War when, when the fascists uh, um, aggressed uh, uh, the Soviet Union and all uh, those uh, state structures uh, which were intended to be built up by the constitution of 36, the so-called Stalin constitution, uh, had to be postponed because uh, under conditions of war that wasn't possible. Uh, but we should, we should take into uh, consideration that this uh, constitution of 36 was one of the most democratic constitutions in Europe in that time and even in our times. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should uh, uh, remember uh, that when the United Nations were founded in uh, 1945 after the war, uh, parts of the Soviet constitution, of the Stalin constitution, uh, were integrated in the founding documents of the uh, United Nations uh, that says something about it. And uh, you must say that can just this constitution, which was a planning idea how to develop democracy and to uh, diminish bureaucracy in the um, uh, building up, further building up uh, of socialism in the Soviet Union, uh, that this constitution uh, was uh, launched uh, just in the same moment when the big trials in, in Moscow against the opposition of the party, against Bukharin and Zinoviev, and took place. Uh, trials which really didn't follow the legal uh, rules uh, uh, that were put down in the, in the Constitution. Thus, those are contradictions which we have to reflect, to reflect theoretically and not only morally and emotionally, uh, in order to understand what, is, what means a revolution under the abnormal situation that the uh, society in which the revolution takes place is not mature for the revolution. And all the revolutions which took, took place after the October Revolution, the Chinese, the Cuban Revolution, even now Venezuela, are revolutions in countries which are not mature for the transformation of late capitalism into uh, socialism and have the abnormal situation to, um, uh, uh, to do things in a short time which had been prepared uh, uh, or should have been prepared in a long development um, of uh, social uh, systems. Well, uh, that uh, I should say uh, uh, is to take into consideration if we think about revolutions in the 21st century. Does that mean that um, the revolution, uh, the theory of revolution as it was conceived by Marx and, and Engels and Lenin um, uh, has been uh, become obsolete and we have to uh, have another um, uh, theory of the transformation of uh, 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 capitalist in a socialist society. I think all these uh, ideologists who are now speaking of uh, a Marxism for the 21st century uh, do the wrong thing because they firstly don't emphasize the central point of the property of uh, private property of um, uh, production needs. Because they secondly think they can uh, apply the ideas of bourgeois democracy on a, a socialist democracy. That is not possible. The bourgeois democracy <coughs> was developed, and I don't tell it to English people because it was developed in England as the method how the ruling classes in their wings and contradictional interests can be in so far harmonized that the state functions. That means that the bourgeois democracy is a system of functioning uh, uh, for the ruling classes. 
and therefore it cannot be uh, the, the model uh, for uh, socialist society where there are no rule, ruling classes who own uh, the, the production means. And it must be another type of uh, democracy. And I think uh, we have not yet uh, elaborated uh, a systematical uh, scheme for such a socialist democracy, which, and I think uh, uh, this is uh, a deep insight uh, which we now have uh, from uh, the developments in uh, countries as Cuba, as Venezuela, uh, this uh, socialist democracy has to be developed on the basis of the respective um, uh, cultural and uh, political traditions of the country where it is uh, developed. And uh, that naturally um, uh, a democracy in China um, will have some other, a lot of other features than uh, a democracy in Cuba, or then if you if you once have a, a socialist democracy in Europe and in Europe even in different kinds in different countries and I would say in, in Italy it will be other in other ways than in England or or in Norway and Sweden and we must learn that there is one Marxism which has a lot of uh, uh, realizations uh, under different conditions. That I think that is a, a historical materialist uh, view of the thing. It was a, a great fault uh, of the Soviet Union, especially in the, in the last 30 years of the Soviet Union, uh, to impose the model of Soviet um, state uh, structure uh, to the countries uh, in uh, uh, which uh, which were um, allied with uh, them and which were socialist in, in Eastern Europe or in the, the GDR or so. Uh, uh, <coughs> and I think that this development uh, that the Soviet Union imposed its model in such a way uh, also was connected with a decrease of theoretical uh, reflection. Uh, the impoverishment of, uh, of Marxist theory in the last 30 years of the Soviet Union was one of the main uh, causes uh, for the downfall of socialism in these countries. I, I understand. Well, uh, uh, I try to, f uh, to point out that the October Revolution teaches us in its um, consequences uh, in the building up of socialism, uh, positive elements which we will have to, 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 to cling to, and those elements of which we say there was uh, arising from these contradictions a uh, contradiction, uh, wrong way, and we must uh, try to find another way. And that is in our situation. And, uh, we see with that, that is in our situation a uh, more and more theoretical question, ideological question, uh, to find the, uh, the, uh, the patterns of um, uh, this um, uh, Marxist uh, view uh, of a socialist future. Patterns which cannot uh, uh, go away from the foundations, foundations of our classical texts, but we will have to um, uh, draw consequences from all the applications which have been made uh, of these texts. Uh, I think I should uh, see here. <laughs> Thank you.